You've probably heard the words quantum computer, but do you really understand it? Do you know why the computers look like this? And did you know how its technological discoveries can completely change our world? Find out all this and more on this week's episode of Teens Teach. The story of quantum computing begins with one of the smartest men in history being proven wrong. During the 1920s, after discovering the basics of quantum mechanics using the photoelectric effect, Einstein was looking for a new challenge. He set his sights on further proving his beliefs about the field. But one man came ready to prove him wrong. And now introducing his opponent, Niels Bohr. Bohr believed in the concept of superposition, or the idea that objects can exist in multiple places at the same time. And then Einstein was like, no way, man, you're lying. When he uttered a famous quote, wondering that there must be some other variables at play, God does not play dice with the universe. Sadly though, both men died before a definitive answer could be discovered. Fast forward to the 1980s, where the only thing they did right were gremlins and bell machines. Physicist Alan Aspect was on a mission to settle Einstein's beef once and for all. Through his experiments, Aspect discovered that Bohr was right, and objects could in fact exist in multiple states at once. And for his work, Aspect won a Nobel Prize 40 years later. I mean, they couldn't have given it to him a little bit earlier? Like, if he had it in his prime, he could have added that to his Instagram page. Everyone would have been all over him. But no, he had to get it in 2022. Einstein once said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. Oh, he was right. God wasn't playing dice. The whole time, he was doing the Tide Pod Challenge. The fundamental principle of superpositioning is exactly how quantum computers work. Traditional computers use bits, ones, and zeros to perform calculations, but quantum computers, they use qubits, where calculations can be performed in a superposition of both zero and one. In other words, quantum computing can explore the possibility of both a zero and a one at the same time. But why do quantum computers look like some sort of alien Hellcat engine? Like I mentioned earlier, quantum computers use qubits in order to operate within a superposition of multiple states. However, these qubits can only remain within superposition when they're maintained at extremely cold temperatures. Meaning that what you see most of that is really just refrigeration. Quantum computers are chilled as cold as a hundredth of a degree away from absolute zero. And if you don't know, absolute zero is, well, well that's pretty cold. If you were to plot out the boiling point of water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, this is where that would appear. Now, at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the freezing point of water would appear right there. But when it comes to absolute zero, at negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where things get blown out of proportion. Absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature. A temperature at which atoms in any object just completely stop moving. These computers are just like Giannis. They really got ice in their veins. With this unorthodox means of solving problems, Quantum computers can tackle certain issues that even the fastest supercomputers can take years to solve. This concept is known as quantum supremacy. The fundamentals of quantum computing are built off of quantum mechanics, and so is everything else in our entire world. Quantum mechanics provides the blueprints that our planet abides by, and the quantum computer 
Well, it's built off of these same exact rules. As a result, quantum computers are able to model the very molecular structures that make up our universe. For modern day pharmaceutical companies, one of the largest obstacles is just being able to accurately model the molecular structure of certain materials. But with the help of quantum computers, not only can these structures be made with the previously unknown level of precision, but these structures can be simulated on and tested, creating accurate results for new medicine and treatments without a single human trial. Modern quantum computers from IBM only have 127 qubits. And researchers even say that achieving 5,000 qubits would be insufficient in terms of computational power. The bottom line is, these quantum computers are a long way from changing our world. But the framework surrounding this new technology opens up so many doors for humanity. Thank you for watching our newest video on quantum computing. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed what you were watching and you found something interesting or you just found out some new information you didn't know before. Leave a like if that was the case and consider commenting if you have some feedback for us. We're always looking to evolve here at Teen Teach. And also check out some of our other videos because the artistic style in this one is slightly different. Um, we usually use a lot of green screen and visual effects but this one was a little bit um, altered in terms of that. So just let us know, give us some feedback, consider all those things, liking, subscribing, and yeah, thank you for your time, and uh, have a good one.